Welcome to the Dental Marketing Guy Show. I'm Justin, the Dental Marketing Guy, and today I have a legendary guest. Uh, she really requires no introduction, uh, but if you have been on the Dental Town forums, you've probably heard of Sandy Pardue. If you've ever asked for advice about how to run your practice, we're talking about practice management, we're talking about creating systems that work in your practice. We're talking about all the ins and outs from, from the insurance issues to how to get more money out of hygiene and how to really just run a practice that leaves you stress-free and, and happy and based on your goals. Um, you know, I, I probably couldn't even attempt to talk about all your credentials, uh, Mrs. Pardue. So let me, just, let me just ask you, how are you? I am doing great today. I've been in meetings all day, so I was really looking forward to this time to relax and talk about dental practices. That's excellent. Yeah, and and I know you're a busy woman because very, very high demand for your services. And uh, what I'd like to do is, you know, I just kind of like to take it back a step and see, uh, you know, how did you get into the dental industry? What's your background and, and what do you do to help dentists? Okay, well, it started a long time ago, actually about 32 years ago. I uh, never thought I would be working really as an adult. I, I went to LSU and then I, my goal was to get married and have kids and, and be a housewife. And so I did that. I got married and I uh, had a daughter and I hated being at home and I'd always heard about this dentist in Baton Rouge who back then, I'll tell you it was 1985, that was doing 1.2 million a year. People were traveling from all over the world to see this dentist. Of course this was pre-computer. Uh, he didn't get computers until 1988, which was still very early by the way. So there were like 17, 18 staff members, and uh, we, uh, I, I'll just tell you, had a great reputation. I thought if I can work there, I think I'd like to go back to work. So I applied, and I got the job, and I was his office manager for eight years, and it was so much fun. I knew I needed to expand and become a consultant because people were already, like I said, traveling around the world just to see this practice that was so efficient highly production, productive and very organized. But I loved that job. And I eventually in 1993, I left the building. I went down about three doors down into our own office where we started Classic Practice Resources. And uh, I'll tell you, the rest is history. People have traveled literally from around the world. We just had a group here and we had people from Canada and Alaska. And we've had people come from Japan and Hawaii and Australia as well. So it's been a lot of fun. That's excellent. And you know, I, I love hearing that story because I know a lot of dentists hop on Dental Town and they ask questions about their practice and, and you're on there and you give a lot of good advice. So that's interesting to hear kind of the backstory of how you got into it. Uh, I like that. Um, could you maybe tell us a couple stories about you know, just one or two stories of how you've helped dentists and, and, and you know, how, what that process was like. Okay. Well, first off, you have to know that people do not contact us just because they have a floundering practice. People contact us for many reasons. They could be stressed out and uh, some could be doing two million a year solo, making all the money that they could ever want but maybe they just feel like there's too many bumps and, and they dread going to work and they know they could be more organized and things could be more predictable. And then we've also had a lot of new dentists. They, they get out of school and they want to be organized and they want to save time. They don't want to take five years to ramp up their practice. They, they understand a consultant can get them going very quickly. And uh, so we've worked with all of these types of practices all the way from 400,000 a year to six million dollar a year practices. So, you know, like I said, there are different areas that they need help in, but I will tell you, there's, I've never seen a perfect practice. No matter what the production level is, or how wonderful the doctor is, and their leadership abilities are fantastic, and their technical skills are great, 
there's always something that needs to be done. And typically, the thing that we see the most is that the back door is wide open in practices. So when I, when I say that, uh, I mean that patients find the practice, maybe they, they saw an advertisement, maybe a friend told them over the backyard fence, and they called the practice, they, they came in, and then the systems were so broken down within the practice that the patients never returned. And this is very common. The average patient retention in practices was running 40 to 50%. So after a consulting program and that staff are trained, especially on the front end with the telephones and recall systems and verbal skills, then we can see that retention increase to 80 and 85 percent. Wow. All right. All right. You know, and, and it's I like that you're taking the approach of, you know, it's not just about money. And I always talk in my videos and my blog, the Dental Marketing Guy blog, I'm like, you know, you know, a lot of people think that people become dentists to make money. And when you have certain systems, I've been, I've been critical, uh, and, I, and I don't think that there's a different approach for every practice, but I've been critical of a lot of coupon mailers and, and of you know, the, the gift cards, hey, send someone to us, anyone, and we'll give you a $25 gift card. I've, I've been somewhat critical of those programs, but I know there's custom solutions for every practice. Um, you know, and, and I think that ultimately what every dentist is looking for in their practice, it differs from one dentist to another. So sure. like you've got a really holistic approach towards uh, that sort of thing. So maybe what's what's one example of uh, let's let's do not money related. Let's talk about you know maybe a doctor who's had too much stress. He feels like he doesn't have control of his staff and his patients. Like you said, the back door is wide open, and he just wants to solve some of these non money sure. issues. Yeah. Well, if if I were to ask uh, ten doctors what their, their stress, where does the stress come from? What keeps you up at night? Eight of those 10 doctors are going to tell me staff. Mm -hmm. that, that's going to be their answer. So whether they're doing two million a year solo and everything is going great, or they are floundering, staff is always going to be an issue. So this is where we get into good hiring protocols. And then my goodness, the most important thing is the training protocols. It's like, the, how can you expect someone just to uh, come into the practice and know exactly how you want to run your business? And that happens a lot. Dentists hire staff that have worked in a dental practice and they walk into their office as a new employee and then they bring all the bad habits from where they used to work. So there are no exact protocols to follow. There's no real recipe, no practice management recipe. And that's a huge problem. And we see that consistently. So we go in and we, we know what needs to take place in a practice. We have 42 systems and then we work on each one of those. And that doesn't mean that when we go into a practice, every one of those systems needs to be redone. No, practices are doing a lot of really good things right now, all the time. And we see it, but we go in and tweak it and find out where the missed opportunities are and get those staff trained so they can support the doctor and the doctor can stay in the treatment room. And that's huge. So, I mean, right now, patient retention that we just talked about and now staff, hiring the right staff and staff training is very key. Excellent. Excellent. And, you know, I think the examples of, of you helping Dennis, it's, it's just there's hundreds, of, I don't even know, there might be thousands. It's, it's very, very amazing. Uh, your reputation, I know Howard Fran is a huge fan of you. He says nothing yeah. but great things. Uh, I mean, your reputation is incredible on those forums. Uh, and you're not, you're not salesy. You're not like, hey, buy my systems, buy my systems. You're actually on there offering great advice. And I've seen it time and time again where just a quick question right. uh, comes in. You just answer it. You don't plug your service mm -hmm. in. Um, you're not like hire me, hire me. People mm -hmm. are coming to you because you're a thought leader in your industry. And uh, yeah, what I'm what I'm hoping to do is, you know, before 
we we go, I'd like to get into some like quick tips or maybe okay. some some a quick strategy that you could put forth for some of our listeners, some of our viewers to say, oh, okay, yeah, that's something I could do. Okay, absolutely. So what every listener should do right away is go to their computer software. And if, if they don't know how to do this, they need to contact their software company and they need to get this figured out. It's easy. The first thing they should do is find out how many people need to come in right now that haven't been in in six months or longer. So they'll go back and they're looking for last visit dates. So for example, let's just say they would pull a report for every patient whose last visit fell between January of 2012 and January 1st of 2016. So I'd say go back that far. And they're going to be shocked. There's going to be thousands of people. Okay, well, maybe hundreds, but I guarantee you a practice has been that's been in practice for maybe five or more years are going to have 1,000 people that are due right now to come in. And if they have been in practice for 15, 20 years, they're going to have about 2,000 patients that need to get in immediately. Of course, you can't get them in all at one time, and that's where a lot of practices look and say, my goodness, we've got all these patients that need to come in. We can't communicate with them. What will we do to handle it? No, they need to start communicating with all of them right away. Now, the next thing they do, because you see this a lot on Dental Town, doctors will come on and say, I have no one on my schedule. What am I going to do? I'm just sitting here on Dental Town. Okay, go to your software, pull a report of incomplete treatment. Go back 12 months. All the patients that you have diagnosed needing treatment over the last 12 months, you are going to be shocked. We see this at 500000 We see this at $1 million dollars of treatment that was presented and not accepted. And by the way, keep those, keep your computer, the treatment plans in the computer updated all the time. So if you offer two different options to patients and they take one, take the other one out so that your reporting is going. This, so you've got patients that haven't been in and you've got incomplete treatment and that is huge so many missed opportunities what's what's the action they can take so that's obviously really good data they can take so they get that data now what do you do with it do you how where do you well go? great question so what they're going to do is with the first one whenever they find out oh my goodness we've got 1500 people that need to come in they're going to start communicating see most practices inactivate patients after 12 months and I'm, my message here is never in actions. If they have blood flowing through their veins and they, they didn't call and say, I'm never coming back or I moved out of town, guess what? They're a patient in that practice. So that, that message has to be spread around to the dental industry and all staff. Stop inactivating patients just because they didn't come in. You need to start communicating to these people. If they haven't been in in 18 months, if they haven't been in in two years, guess who needs the work? Not the, the easy patient that was there six months ago. It's the patients that haven't been in in a long time. Those are the people. So you can send cards. You can send emails. We have done a lot of studies, and, and even though I believe, firmly believe, that every practice should be communicating via email, I also believe they need to incorporate in their system postcards. Postcards are much more effective than email because only 28% of emails are opened. And that's the statistic. Now, so that's, so you're going to communicate with them. You're going to do reactivation with them and let them know they're welcome back in your practice. You see, yeah. that's what has, because people, you, you got to really look at it, the whole aspect of this. It's like patients, they become embarrassed that they haven't been back. So they end up going somewhere else. Have you ever thought like these new patients this month? Oh, we got 50 new patients this month. Well, have you ever thought like, where did those 50 new patients go like three years ago? Well, I'll tell you, they were in another dental practice and something caused them to not stay. Right. You see, 
So, so that's what you want to change. You want to change that. You want to keep them in your practice. So maybe they went and tried another office, and now you're going to communicate with them via postcard and welcome them back to the practice, and you're going to get back a lot of them. A lot of them are going to come. I'm going to say 10% are going to come back. If you followed our reactivation project that's available on our website, you're going to get 9 to 19% of those patients back without a phone call. Now, then you've got the people with incomplete treatment. Now, here are these people. A lot of times practices are overwhelming patients. I've never seen a practice with people lined up outside the door waiting to come into the chair. I, I've never seen it. And if you know of one, call me. I want, I want to go and take pictures. It's not the case. When you look at the statistics at right now that like 48% of, of patients even go to the dentist, uh, we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do in dentistry in educating our patients. The American Dental Association is doing nothing to do it. So patients get diagnosed. They don't understand that their condition will only get worse. It's not going to get better. It's only going to cost more. So we have to educate and tell them what will happen if they don't get the work. And we've done a lot of phone recording for many years on this topic. And uh, it's really important. So what I suggest, if you just have your staff call and call and call on the phone, it's going to be a turnoff. So what you have to do in this case is communicate via incomplete treatment letter, a short letter, not something really long. You, you want to communicate with a short letter, just letting them know that, that you would like to see them back in the office. They have incomplete treatment. Yes. Excellent. You know, that's, that's so great because, you know, I actually implemented a similar thing in my business where I, I just tell people, hey, yeah, I just give them permission to contact me in the future. Because yes. sometimes if it's not the right time for you, a lot of dentists contact me about SEO, about content mm -hmm. marketing, web design and stuff like that. And yeah. for whatever reason, it's not the right time for them. And that's okay. And giving them permission, hey, listen, I'm happy to answer any questions you ever have. You know, just I think a lot of people just assume this goes for dental patients and dentists and everyone is just assume that if you reject someone's services at that time, that mm -hmm. they're going to have their feelings hurt and that, you know, you might want to avoid them in order to circumvent any kind of conflict or, or awkwardness or whatever. And so I think that's really key is what you're saying is just giving, letting people know, Hey, there, there are no hard feelings. Uh, I understand that it wasn't the right time for you. Uh, you know, the ADA said you needed your teeth clean, but you didn't think you did. And that's okay. Right. Right. So, you know, right. and, and then for major, major work, obviously, that's even more uh, that applies even more than cleaning, because mm -hmm. if someone's looking for an all on four and, and I'm sure you know this, you know, they're going to shop around. They're going to want a lot of education mm -hmm. on content. Right. To make that educated decision. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I think, you know, just giving people permission to contact you. That's that's really huge. I like that. Well, the, here's the thing. A lot of them have actually gone to another dentist and and tried it. And that, mm -hmm. you see, so the, you're, you're kind of just making it okay to come back. And that's what happens. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, hey, uh, this has been really, really a great interview. Uh, I, I know that the listeners, they the, many of them think very highly of you already, but I, I'm, I'm happy to hear that story of how you got into dent dentistry, if I can even talk. And uh, yeah, I, I'd love to put, put the viewers in, in touch with you. Where can they find you? Classicpractice.com. Or they can email me at Sandy, and that's Sandy with a Y, S-A-N-D-Y, at classicpractice.com. Excellent. That's great. You know, it's an internet age and um, I'm always harping on the, you got to have your website out there. People got to know it. That's the hub of your online marketing. Absolutely. And yeah. So it's, it's been, it's been so educational. Let's talk uh, soon, Sandy. I am definitely interested in uh, some of my clients are, they've been asking me who, who do I, who can I trust Justin? Who can I trust for practice? solutions for practice management solutions and uh, man it's such an honor to interview you uh, thank mm -hmm. you Sandy uh, very happy to do it 
Excellent. And guys, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Sandy wherever you find this on the Dental Marketing blog, the uh, Dental Marketing Guy blog. Uh, go ahead and reach out in the comments below on Dental Town, social media, wherever you find this. Uh, I'm sure in 18, 19 minutes, we weren't able to cover all your questions. Uh, but but please reach out if you have any. I know Sandy is more than happy to answer those. So thank Absolutely. You. Excellent. And thank you for watching the Dental Marketing Guy show.